Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Ted B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. This will undoubtedly be bad news for some of you, so let's get it out of the way. I was talking to both Elon and uh, Mark last night. Both guys are absolutely dead serious about this. They both want to do it. Mark Zuckerberg hit me up first and said, is he serious? And I said, I don't know. Let me ask him. I asked him and he said, yeah, I'm dead serious. This would be the biggest fight ever in the history of the world. Um, bigger than anything that's ever been done. It would break all pay-per-view records. These guys would raise, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for charity. And, uh, you know, you don't have to be a fight fan to be interested in this fight. You, you Everybody would want to see it. As I said yesterday, if there's a silver lining to be had, it's that hopefully there is a big charity component to this whole event. So nothing is guaranteed, but I figured I'd pass this along. And to those of you vehemently opposed to this entire situation, at least Mama May is on your side. Rob did cover this thread on the Project Highland rumors last night, so I won't go over it again, but if you missed that, either watch his video or I will have this Twitter thread below. I do have to say though, if these rumors are true, it's even better than I was expecting. And if I'm getting greedy in a pipe dream world, the one feature I would love to see on the Model 3 is a hatchback, but presumably that's a decent amount of new engineering, not mentioned in the thread, so unlikely to see that. Additionally, when it comes to the steer by wire mention, I had come into this thread thinking Cybertruck was maybe 50-50 to have that feature. After this thread and the sources they mentioned, I would now be more at about 75% likely to see steer by wire on the Cybertruck, which of course would be awesome. Yesterday alone, we saw multiple instances of different Cybertruck sightings. And so now we might have between 10 and 20 Cybertrucks globally in testing because remember at least one is over in New Zealand. Here's one more quick video sighting from yesterday, but today we actually get some Cybertruck leaks inside the Giga Austin factory, showing us the real Cybertruck production line may be in action because some of these prototype alpha builds that we've seen were built in Fremont. First up from Joe Tetmeyer, we see that two 9,000 ton Giga presses are installed at Giga Texas. Zooming in on one of Joe's photos, you can see some Cybertruck casting sitting on the floor. So here's that same shot zoomed out. You can pause if you'd like. At the time of recording, Joe has not yet uploaded the YouTube video where these shots actually came from. So be on the lookout for that if you want to see more. I just wanted to highlight it wasn't that long ago that Tesla had a sheet or curtains up that were blocking this window, presumably to block our view. Those have conveniently been taken down almost like Tesla wants us to see what's going on. Then on Facebook from Alejandro Garcia, we have this video which I think is the Cybertruck body on the actual Cybertruck production line at Giga Texas. Alongside that video, we got these two pictures, this cyber bin over on the left, and then this image that some people are saying is a Cybertruck door. I'm not sure I'd be ready to go that far, but whatever it actually is, it definitely looks destined to be in the Cybertruck. And this image was spotted outside of Giga Texas, and we think that these are Cybertruck castings. In these racks, that's a pretty good indication that these will actually be used. These are not just scrap parts. At the same time, Tesla has been making some small tweaks to the Cybertruck reservation page. So if you have one, check yours. If when you reserved yours, you had a configuration, it will show that. And you can get some more details about support, trade and estimates and different agreement documents. You can't configure or really do anything here yet, but clearly Tesla is getting ready for that step. Simply put, it looks like some actual Cybertruck production line testing has begun. Now, no, I don't think these vehicles will be going to customers in the future. I just think it's testing. Exciting to see either way. We also get a filed patent from Tesla for a power tailgate mechanism. It's a system for moving a hinge between an open position and a closed position. The hinge couples a closure panel to a body. The system can include an actuator for driving the closure panel between the open position and the closed position. A counterweight member reduces a mechanical effort provided by the actuator to drive the closure panel. I paused on actuator because let's not forget about Tesla's actuators team where they're essentially making custom in-house actuators for Optimus that they could of course use elsewhere as well. The pictures aren't great here, but the patent will be below. What you really need to know, this design will also include a controller and sensors again to 
to move the tailgate. In the patent, Tesla talks about reducing the number of components, which streamlines the supply chain, makes installation a lot easier, and of course, lowers costs. But most importantly, they talked about reliability and lighter weight, which could of course increase range a bit. One of the best parts though, Tesla said you would be able to open and close the tailgate through your key fob and the mobile app. And remember, it's a patent, there are no guarantees. We see this in the first Cybertrucks produced, but we have to keep in mind, Tesla had shown this ramp when the Cybertruck was unveiled. At least for now, there's no official indication whether that will still be a feature or not. Again, the patent will be below, and personally, I've never owned a pickup truck, but I would guess that if you have, a few people would have left your tailgate open a time or two when you drive away. So to have those sensors and to get notifications that you left it open and be able to close it real quick from your phone or a key fob, pretty nice feature. Speaking of patents, Tesla also filed another one titled Windshield Wiper Systems. This one was for the Tesla Semi. Just part of the abstract, a first wiper arm and a second wiper arm both supporting at least one wiper blade. A wiper motor drives rotation of the first wiper arm. An actuator is coupled eccentrically to the second wiper arm so as to convert rotary motion of the actuator to reciprocating motion of the second wiper arm. I won't dive into this one. This is probably less relevant to a majority of you than the Cybertruck one, but of course, patent will be linked below. It should be noted though, the wiper patent for the Tesla Semi is also addressing some aerodynamic challenges that other iterations have faced. If you're wondering, yes, this shirt I'm wearing is from Sawyer's Twin Birch. Yes, I'm a big fan. No, he's not paying me to say this. He doesn't even know I'm saying this. So if you wanna support Sawyer, I'll have his link to Twin Birch below. We haven't checked in on Giga Berlin in a while, so I wanted to show you a clip from Tobias Lind in his recent video showing the train station that is still under construction but making good progress. Again, this is expected to transport people and there have been talks of transporting cars via rail as well. And, uh, and we now have 17 and a half million shares. Uh, and, uh, and I think we're gonna make six or seven times. I think it's the stock is now 225, 230, 250. I think it's gonna be 500 in uh, 2025. And I think in 2030, it's gonna be 1500. That's my targets. The rest of that clip was Ron talking about how he runs his fund and some anecdotal stories. But if you take his $1,500 Tesla stock price target by 2030, multiply that by the rough number of Tesla shares outstanding, that would give us a market cap for Tesla of about $4.7 trillion by 2030. This coming from a man who has already made billions of dollars from Tesla stock. If you think that's exciting, well, have a listen to this. Tesla, by our uh, research, thanks to um, our associate Daniel McGuire, he put out some great um, stats today. Uh, we think that they're in full self-driving, uh, their FSD software, uh, their fleet is traveling over 1 million miles every 14 hours. That compares to just 2 million miles in the cumulative lifetime of Cruise, which is GM's autonomous car project. So, you know, the advantage is really unparalleled, and we think this is what unlocks superior AI capability. Well, our price target for Tesla over the next five years is that we think it has an expected value of roughly $2,000 per share. And, um, you know, we're talking about American-made cars here, which, which is critical. It's, it's you know, um, it's great brand image. It's great for our country. It's great for tax credits. Um, but, you know, what the list does not show is that not all of these cars are made equal. And uh, the advantage that Tesla has in software and in data is unparalleled compared to peers. And really, all automakers should be pursuing full autonomy, right? That's the future of the auto industry. We find that, you know, if, if you're looking backwards, it's very tough to predict sort of these exponential growth stories that we see. And I, I think that Tesla is just the perfect example of that. So $2,000 a share times that same rough number of Tesla shares outstanding would be a market cap of about $6.3 trillion sometime around 2029. And look, I know at first glance, it may seem wild, and a lot of things really are going to have to break right and come together. However, if Tesla has robotaxis deployed in some geographies, if Optimus is doing real work, if Dojo is as successful as Tesla hopes that it's going to be, if you pair those AI-driven business lines with what Tesla Auto and Tesla Energy will be doing in another five years, 
Honestly, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Of course, the macro has to comply, and again, a lot has to break right, but it should be a very exciting couple of years. We have a rare physical Tesla recall, but it's only affecting a handful of Model 3 and Ys due to a pyrotechnic battery disconnect. Essentially, this is that device that disconnects the high voltage battery in the event of an accident or other event. If you're one of the unlucky few that needs this done, Tesla will just replace the battery disconnect for free. I hesitated to share this one because I've never seen a tweet from this account. I cannot at all comment on the credibility level, but passing it along anyway, there's a secret 12 passenger Tesla van prototype in a hidden room in the boring company's Las Vegas headquarters, according to a source. We already know to some extent Tesla has been working on a van, so take this one for what you will. Lexus is about to come to market with its first EV offering, and it's the RZ450. Manufacturer estimated range of up to 220 miles. And that's actually on 18 inch wheels. If you bump it up to a 20 inch wheel, the range number goes down to 196. This vehicle is supposed to have a battery pack size, usable capacity around 65 kilowatt hours on a 400 volt architecture, starting at about $60,000. Corey from Monroe Live did a walk around first impressions of the vehicle and overall came away with some features he liked, of course, some others that he didn't, kind of meh overall. I'll link that video below if you missed it. I have to say though, from a luxury brand for their first electric vehicle to come out with a range of only on average around 200 miles is just not going to get it done in my opinion. It sounds like Volkswagen is full steam ahead on a sub 17,000 euro electric ID1 hatch that should arrive in the next five years. VW CFO said this, I love how he starts the quote, for the time being, we're quite confident we can achieve that price point. This car will have the first in-house battery cells from our Valencia plant. And he's saying their confidence in achieving this price point is because of relief on the raw material side, lithium and nickel. From that perspective, they think they can hit the target and at the same time have a decent margin. I can guarantee you right now they are going to need much more than just raw material prices to come down to hit that price point with a decent vehicle and have decent margins. We don't learn much about this ID1 other than it's not going to use the same MEB entry platform that the ID2 is using. The name is yet to be finalized, but it sounds like this one is still a few years away. In an update from Rivian, they tell us they have already integrated some features of their recent acquisition of a better route planner, and you can use some of those features through the Rivian mobile app in the latest software update. Things like multiple trip stops, setting your preferred arrival range, customization for different charger selections, Collections and more. These user experience, customer interface type of features are a huge deal for repeat customers. So happy to see Rivian moving forward with this one. You can find me on Twitter at DylanLoomis22. Hope you guys have a wonderful and a safe weekend. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.